All right, with a little luck here, you should be hearing me and seeing me as I'm basically gorgeous for, I'm doing this a little differently than I've done some of the previous live streaming nonsense. So first, if someone could just mention in the chat whether or not they can hear me, great. Oh, and it's even at the same time, great. There, it's been a year when it comes to AV stuff. So a little background on where this came from and how it all began is last year in the middle of the night, which, you know, at dinner number four at reInvent, it occurred to me it would be funny to walk around the expo hall and do a nature walk. This year, I figured I'd do it with costumes and then COVID hit and we didn't wind up doing anything that uh, would resemble an expo hall. And there really is no expo hall at reInvent this year because it's online or so you would assume. As it turns out, there is, and it is horrifyingly expensive. Uh, let's take a look here specifically to see what it is that we're talking about. Now, we're all used to the reInvent page, but if you click on the hidden hamburger in the top left, don't actually do this. I'm driving the Jeep. You're just telling me where to drive it, to be clear. You, again, the whole point of a nature walk is that you observe you don't wind up changing the ecosystem. And if you let vendors scan your badge, it's going to unfortunately become, a, a, it's going to lead to a scenario where they become dependent on us. We have to be respectful of their ecosystem, no matter what else that costs us. So please look, take only pictures or screenshots, but don't feed the animals. It never goes well. Now, we scroll over to this menu and we, and we start looking down through it. And midway through, there's a buried sponsors thing in here, which is great. And there are three various places to look at. If you hit the vaguely described meet our sponsors tab, it opens up a giant sea of a whole crap ton of sponsors. And they very much would like to talk with some of us. But let's talk about what it takes to get onto this page first. So for... Basically, uh, how to frame this. You're only allowed to sponsor this if you're a pre-existing sponsor in a previous year because space was limited. That's right. Somehow, space on this giant website was limited to only previous sponsors. And what does it cost if this is something you want to do? Great. Their prospectus was public for a long time. The first version was a quarter gigabyte large. Now, this one is a lot smaller, and you can still grab it last time I checked. It has the standard marketing spiel about what this looks like, why you should be, why you should sponsor it, 50 speaking opportunities, a bunch of MPO, marketing promotional opportunities, uh, is something else you can add as a bolt-on. Um, in some level, this is really weird because it has a pricing model that's straightforward and is easily understood in advance, which is the least AWS thing possible. Here we are. And of course, it while we're randomly pulling numbers out of our asses, we're going to claim that there's over a quarter million people who will be attending this thing. Now, attending is kind of a lofty term, because remember, for a lot of people I've spoken to and people watching this until you joined here, you may not have been aware that there even is a sponsor page. That's okay. It's not like it was expensive, right? Moving on, we take a look at the persona of who are going to be showing up for these things. And sure, some are developers and some are IT professionals. Now, that's, maybe I'm just nuts, but I sort of believe that those two jobs are converging to the same thing. What do I know? I'm not a marketing person. IT leaders, I, I think a lot of people there would self-identify as well, and business decision makers. That is... Awesome, because as it mentions here, IT directors are not considered decision makers. Don't tell them about that. And basically what this is really asking is how much signing authority do you have? They wind up with a whole bunch of other breakdown, what industry things are coming out of, what region it's going through. And ah, in 2019, 88.9% of attendees interacted with at least one sponsor at reInvent. Now, what does that mean? Well, first, they went to the expo hall in some form and presumably were tackled by one of the Datadog attack interns who can scan a badge at 40 paces. And that counts as an engagement. Check. My big question is how over 11% of attendees managed to avoid that fate. I'm assuming they just didn't show up. And, of course, lead generation. Now, lead generation is kind of a weird thing. Just because you get someone's email address doesn't necessarily make them a lead. There's an idea in marketing of a qualified lead, someone who's actually what someone you'd want to sell something to instead of, you know, just someone who shows up and will fill out whatever form you give them because they want a t-shirt. You can't really give t-shirts online in the same ways. Now, they talk about the benefits of sponsoring reInvent. Awareness. 
On some level, I feel like I need to ice my back because I'm carrying this entire event for AWS marketing. Uh, has anyone seen any promotion to the Sponsor Expo? Mentioned in the Twitch chat, please, because I haven't, and I've been looking specifically for this, and it's been pretty slim pickings. Uh, they talk about content engagement as well, of people watching content, giving comments on it, etc. A sponsored quiz, which I haven't seen either. And of course, lead generation and all kinds of wonderful things here uh, for opt-in attendees. That's people who check the box of let sponsors contact me. Now, I sponsored it. I, I checked that box because I gave a tagged email address. And everything that gets to sent to that address is going to be met with a polite form of, yeah, you spend money to get in front of people. And how did that work out for you? How about you spend way less money on my nonsense and be entertaining? That's right. When people walk the expo hall and use it as a targeted anti-lead collection device, the best part is winding up just turning this back on people. People don't actually dislike marketing, believe it or not. It's crappy marketing. Which brings us back to what AWS is doing. They talk about sponsor integration as well, where a site merchandising awareness, banner ads, bumper video ads, and push notifications. Yeah, no one's paying attention to push notifications. And a banner ad is a sort of thing that people instinctively block an ad blocker. And of course, content engagement with a content carousel and recommendation engine. Watch this video next. Maybe it's working, maybe it's not. We'll see. And of course, sponsor page lead opportunities. Yeah, you have to understand, too, that I find this page screamingly funny because our partners indicate 92% satisfaction with their sponsorship. I got to level with you. If you're an AWS partner, you are on some level borderline terrified by what AWS might do for you. So are you like, did you like the thing that we did for you? Yes. Yes. Please don't hit me again. And then we get to the packages and what they cost. That's right. It starts at 35 grand for one of these things and tops out at 125 grand. And we can see the checkbox thing that looks like it's a Microsoft product that talks about the things you get. Not everyone at every tier gets a virtual meeting room where you can get dropped into chat with folks. The one-to-one -one messaging capabilities are a bit strange. Banner ads, etc. A welcome video is something everyone gets because if there's one thing we need from reInvent right now, it's more video content. And of course, oh, access to the press list before the event. Fortunately, they did not count me as press this year, which means I was spared from the giant, hey, we're announcing something at reInvent. Yes, unless it's on stage during one of the keynotes, no one will notice. And it's awesome to see how much, and the thing is, it's not that it's this expensive, it's that they're sold out and they were for a month or two before reInvent. At the platinum sponsorship tier, sold out. Gold sponsorship, 95 grand, sold out. 50 grand for bronze sold out. And all this tells me I really need to raise my rates for sponsoring my nonsense. I charge less than that. And the showcase sponsorship, the cheap thing you can get is, it's just, the cheap thing is 35 grand. And for what? And then the add-ons are where this gets fun. The Cube is a video show similar to some of the live streaming I've done. And you can pop onto that for $20,000. Right. And I used to host the cube from time to time. It was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was great to have conversations with people, but it's, it feels like it's get in, do the thing, rinse, repeat. The conversations tend to look a lot alike and doing them back to back to back to back is super draining. Then of course you have the keynote live stream sponsorship, which is apparent. I didn't see too many of these. So it's align your brand. Like we have the pre-roll video for Intel. So we know that Intel is dropping 175 grand on this instead of, you know, trying to hit their roadmap targets. Good for them. A banner ad, a sponsor video played during the pre-roll and announcement resources in the attachments tab. Has anyone found anything useful yet in the attachments tab? I'm not talking just sponsor stuff. I'm talking any, ooh, this is useful for later. I haven't watched too many of the breakout sessions, so I don't know. Please let me know. That is what the, the Twitch chat is for. There's a what's next sponsor segment for 15 grand. Awesome. There are still two opportunities of those left. An AWS jam, which is, I guess, kind of like an AWS jelly that doesn't have the same branding issues. And whatever the hell that is, is 50 grand. The jam lounge. Cool. Because there's one thing I want, an online event. It's a lounge. Uh, other than back channel things like Twitter or Discord, is there any multiplayer chat room style thing that is officially sanctioned as part of the platform that I'm somehow missing where all the cool kids are hanging out? Because I've seen none of that. It's super depressing and sad. 
host an official event like what? A virtual happy hour. Having been to a few of these, there's nothing sadder than drinking alone in your office, and thanks to time zones, at 9 o'clock in the morning, because it's reInvent, talking with other people doing the same, and who just joined, and no, I'm sorry, you were talking, you go ahead. It's not fun, it's not pleasant, there's no good answer here. An APN TV campaign. Notice that these things are all sold out, and they continue to pile it on. There's the Cube interview, which is like the other The Cube interview, only different somehow, that's not clear, that's why they broke them up. This one's only 12 grand and also sold out. And then reach out, talk to people, thanks for your consideration, etc. The end. So, that's what, so these sponsors have paid giant piles of money, and having spot checked a few of them, they're not seeing an awful lot of value. So now, the goal here is, originally, my business partner, Mike, was going to join me and drive the Jeep, as it were, and point out things for me to make fun of. He unfortunately had a conflict, as executives often do. So he instead is having his thighs rotated. And now I don't have anyone to drive the Jeep because you can be a tour guide or you can drive, do both. You wrap yourself and your passengers around a tree. So this is Twitch drives the Jeep. We're going to keep going through this and looking at various things. And I want you all to start mentioning vendors you'd like to take a look at. And we can learn more about these fascinating creatures and the dying ecosystem in which they find themselves trapped. I am thrilled to wind up exploring basically any, any companies here. Remarkably few are off the table. And that's great. Oh, hey, someone starts with Capital One. We're going to go there. Cool. Capital One's awesome to see at these things because the fun part of... Capital One is they, well, first, let's, let's detour for a minute. First, this thing pops up every time you join, even though I've disabled chat because I don't want to talk to people in this thing. Yeah. You know, frugality is an AWS leadership principle, but it's also one of the ones they wouldn't have to tell you because when you look at this, you can tell the lowest bidder was absolutely involved here. So now we look at these things and things are weird. You know, they have this whole spiel. You click it. It gives you a dive into what they do. But Capital One is fascinating. They had a breach a couple of years back, and the breach was not something simple and dumb. It was a complex series of things chained together. It's, it's the kind of breach where if you have, you look at it, you think that's kind of impressive, and it wasn't that your CEO set the password to Kitty, slapped it on their laptop, and went through an airport with it. And the problem is, is that they clammed up entirely about it, and they became the cloud infosec groundhog, where whenever you mention that security breach, they shut up, and there's six more months of no longer speaking about cloud. It is great to see them coming out. I love using them as a reference of a regulated company with things that matter, being able to talk intelligently about security and regulated industries, and they're moving super fast and super well. It's kind of awesome. Oh, someone said they accidentally watched a video uh, from Capital One yesterday. Yeah, again, with these high-tier sponsorships at 125 grand a piece, incidentally, this is where your credit card fees go, that is the sort of thing. They sneak it in as kind of sponsored content. It's got, it has its moments. Okay, let's move on. Mongo is the next one folks wanted to take a look at. Let's see. Oh, hey, they're the platinum tier too. Again, feel free to continue suggesting these things from time to time. We visit MongoDB. Terrific. Mongo's interesting because they like to rant and rave consistently about how AWS is eating their business, but they also pay an awful lot of money to co-market back and forth. It's very difficult to figure out how these things work. And the relationship between these vendors is strange. You see this at the corporate scale, where you're simultaneously doing a partnership with someone in one arena and suing the living shit out of each other back and forth on the other one. And that kind of sucks. So instead, you now have these weird relationships here. Now, every company is good at some things, and Mongo, to their credit, has focused on something that AWS is not likely to compete with them on, which is losing valuable production data. AWS goes out of their way to avoid that. With Mongo, it's kind of a feature. HSBC did a whole spiel recently about how they're moving 65 relational databases to MongoDB. I feel like that's the modern era equivalent of put all the documents at Enron into the shredder before the auditors and the feds show up. Well, we ran in Mongo. Whoops a doozy. I mostly kid, but they tend to make fun of their customers an awful lot so that I can, uh, so I feel pretty good about uh, punching up at them for the way they've, uh, they've basically blamed customers for not reading the deep detailed fine print on these things. Okay, F5 is another one. Uh, networking vendors are always fun. And are they, uh, are they defining themselves as a networking vendor or are they defining themselves as we bought Nginx, so you have to care about us now? 
we hit the learn more button here and they talk about SaaS application strategy. The last thing you think about when it comes to F5, given that their Twitter handle is F5 Networking. They are a networking company and they always had a super shitty interface on their devices, which means that you would have to refresh the page constantly, which is why they're called F5. It's awful. It didn't work super well. And the old bad days of networking are something that's easy to forget because things are better now. You're able to, at least ideally, configure these things in, in the standard AWS web interface or, you know, lie instead of using CloudFormation or Terraform, but still using the web interface. And things are great. It's a better outcome. But yep, sure enough, they're not talking about Nginx demos every 30 minutes. Nginx is great as an open source software problem, software package rather, because it's the sort of thing you don't really have to care about in most cases. Like, oh, you can use this to build a load balancer. Doesn't AWS offer, this is our sponsor booth. Don't talk about that there. Uh, they also, and I want to point this out, they have the let's chat thing, which will pop up that ever present uh, chat window here and the sponsor site. You click that, they build a dedicated landing page on what they're on their own site. And this is actually the, the smart way to do it. Some other folks have a, just a, a thing carved off inside of the reInvent app. Great though it is. And what sucks is that as you're doing that, great. Why would you drive people into inside of this crappy thing? Drive people to your actual website where you have actual goddamn professionals who are masters of having conversations with customers. Great. Like they have a Cody here. They even spelled it correctly with the E, like in my name. I don't want to harass someone who's uh, going to not have any idea what we're talking about here. But that's sort of the plan here. Okay. Other sponsors we wanted to talk about as we go through this. I think Pulumi was next on the list. Let's see. There's a search at the top, and I love this. You can search by tier, because that's the sort of thing an actual customer cares about. I, I have never yet heard a customer ask, what sponsor tier were you at reInvent? That's The only time they ask that is, that looked really expensive. What the hell sponsor tier were you on at reInvent? So we're going to begin with Pulumi. Okay, at least it's a responsive search. That's better than I was expecting. Yet once again, we're going to close the chat window. So Pulumi talks about modern infrastructure as code. Uh, this is, Pulumi's kind of fun. Uh, full disclosure, they have sponsored some of my nonsense in the past and presumably will again at some point until they see this video or are watching the live stream. But realistically, their, their entire position is, so you love the CDK, right? Yeah, yeah, everyone says, yeah, they love the CDK. Look, that's second only to Rust as far as evangelism being its core tenet. And cool, can you explain it to someone who doesn't know what it is? And the answer is absolutely not. So instead, now we're talking about, so imagine the CDK with a coherent business story and the ability to wind up interacting with things that go beyond pure AWS. Notice here, it says in this freeze frame video, that it works with any cloud. For years, you were not allowed to even imply the existence of other clouds. AWS finally uh, realized that they were they were more or less a subject of mockery. And unlike naming a service systems manager session manager, they wanted to stop the mockery there and did something else. Now, someone else says you can now get hoodies if you engage with sponsors. Yeah, you can also buy a hoodie and that doesn't fill up your inbox for the next 20 years. Okay, who was next on the list here? Uh, trend Micro by Billy the Platypus. My own mascot is taunting me at this point. Is Mark in the Trend Micro booth? Right. So Mark is awesome. And there he is. Oh, there, of course, because he's a Twitch streamer as well. Oh, and he's doing something cutesy because of course he is. And Trend Micro is this sort of old school antivirus company that also serves as a jobs program for Mark, as best I can tell. It's the endpoint story of make sure your antivirus is updated was the entire point of running it. Uh, nowadays, we have better ways of doing that, which is namely install Slack. It used to be you needed antivirus systems to eat up all your RAM. Now we have Slack and Chrome to do that for us. So they're trying to figure out their new positioning and employing Mark to go and give super awesome stories is the right answer. I was tricked earlier into watching one of their sponsored videos with Mark talking and somehow it wasn't a sales pitch. And I've got to say, to be perfectly blunt, this made me think more highly of Trend Micro as a company when they weren't trying to do a buy my crap shoved down my throat. That was awesome. Um, okay, someone else scrolling back. Someone else said next. Cool. IBM is a gold sponsor. Terrific. Terrific. 
Oh, we're down at platinum. Sorry. I was looking in the platinum section. My apologies. They don't have that kind of money. They're too busy wasting it on buying Red Hat. Uh, there we go. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what IBM is doing here because let's face it, reInvent is at least on its face a cloud conference. And that's something that IBM doesn't actually do very well. They claim to, but they don't. I wound up looking into IBM Cloud uh, earlier in the year and doing a live tweet about it. And I think that's the first time I've ever written a review that said this experience is dog shit. I try not to put things like that in writing too often, but it was really bad and it was insulting to customers. They had a big outage uh, this summer that they were very tight lipped about and didn't communicate with for hours. And they just sort of expect people to continue rolling with it. There are great people at IBM and I've spoken to a lot of them and none of them are empowered to fix these things. It's bizarre and insane. Uh, I like how they describe what they're doing here. And I think it's the wrong direction because IBM's entire value here is that it's for folks who are scared of change and scared of the future. If you still want to manage crap like it's 1980, do it. Um, IBMers get extraordinarily angry when you make jokes about wearing suits and ties because that was our corporate dress code, but it hasn't been since the 80s is their, is their point. The counter argument becomes, yeah, but that was the last time anyone gave a shit about IBM. It's, it's a classic story of company in decline. It's just going to take forever for that to happen. I'd like to see them improve and become relevant again, but it's not going to be by turning back the clock and it's not going to be by pretending that their view of what they have to sell us is synonymous with what people need. Okay, what else do we have here? Oh yeah, someone's mentioned their platypus images on the Palumi site. That is correct with the counter argument though, that, the, that my platypus is better. Full stop. I, their thing looks kind of sad and derpy. Billy the platypus could absolutely kick the living crap out of uh, anything that they would wind up doing. And yeah, mirroring is hard with the whole Twitch thing. Don't at me. All right. What have we got next here on this? JitLab. Let's look at JitLab, which also sponsored some of my nonsense. To be clear, sponsoring me does not exempt you from criticism. It does not exempt you from me saying nice things. It just means that I say this at the front, but they sponsored some of my nonsense so that it's, people are very clear that there is a financial relationship there. Disclosure, it's a good thing. Um, okay, so we look at this. They're talking a lot about GitOps, sorry, JitOps and the rest. And it's it's they have a bit of a fun challenge in that they're trying to swim against the stream to some extent because GIFUB is really where a lot of the, the mind share around JIT is. And if you wind up, if you wind up falling down that path, it it's increasingly hard to differentiate because what both GIFUB and JITLAB have done is kind of masterful. And to a lesser extent, Atlassian Bitbucket is that they've taken Git, JIT, a distributed system and re-centralized it to single points of failure that someone else can sell us. And I, I kind of admire that. It's super neat. In practice, it's incredibly valuable. I can't imagine what my workflows would look like without having JIT repositories. And yes, someone's trying to incorrect my pronunciation. Nope, we're rolling with it. This is my safari ride. Get your own. Okay. Uh, someone else wound up, let's see here. AV vendors are secretly crypto miners using all of our resources. Uh, I don't know how secret they are about that, but possibly. Um, yeah, IBM is an AWS competency partner, which is fascinating because it shows that the AWS partner network does not require competence as a prerequisite for a competency. Good to know. Uh, someone else said a minute or two ago that we should talk about Accenture. I'm not going to go too far into all of the big consultancies here just because it's too easy. The first, they all sound alike. And secondly, it looks like I'm basically making these jokes at uh, like the jokes don't tend to get better if I start talking about Deloitte, because who the hell can tell the difference between Accenture and Deloitte? Well, Honestly, the only answer to that one is the folks who work at one or at Hertz who are currently involved in a $32 million lawsuit after after uh, Accenture completely screwed up the website for Hertz, which is the fact that that's spewed out into the public court filings tells me that that's not your run of the mill fuck up. That's a big one. Now, Accenture and I have a bit of a fun backstory because at reInvent two years ago, Accenture Cloud tweeted about how they advise people to wind up handle taking S3 bucket security seriously. And I responded to that tweet with, wait, isn't that the thing that you wound up having a data breach for a few months ago and posted a link to the news article? And then Accenture Cloud blocked me for a few weeks, which, yes, 
Blocking someone like me is the best way to get us to shut up and go away. They're a weird company, and I don't super want to get sued, but one of these days I'll wind up doing a deeper dive with Accenture and maybe even live to regret it. Okay, who else do we have? HashiCorp. All right. Um, it's effectively more... HashiCorp is great because they do a few different things. Where are they hiding? All right. There we go. They're a gold sponsor. Fantastic. I want to just do one, like, just start inventing spears. Like, oh, yeah, I'm an Indigo tier sponsor. Uh, you can't find that on the page. It's on the hidden site. There we go. The... HashiCorp is great because everyone loves what they do because first, it's primarily open source and two, there's super handy things that are coming out of this. It's it's more or less cloud formation in an agnostic way that isn't complete garbage. And for a long time, there was a story where whenever a service came out, Terraform would have better answers and better support on launch day than CloudFormation did. Uh, I think that rounding to my, the, of our customer base on the consulting side, we do AWS billing work, uh, the answer of who uses Terraform rounds to everyone. They're, sure, there's always going to be some CloudFormation nonsense in there, but Terraform is really one, one mind share here. They've also backed away from a lot of their old Atlas offering, which was you'd use Packer and Vagrant and Nomad and all the rest. And the problem they had with that is something other companies are discovering as they go along, which is if you have to buy into the entire ecosystem to use it, you're going to struggle to gain traction. Some people absolutely love using Nomad because it's not Kubernetes as a feature, not a bug. And they, but they don't want to do Packer or Vagrant for things because they're doing other things. Well, that sort of blows them out of the Atlas target market. It's a valuable lesson, but people seem instead seem, seem, seem just doing these things again and again and again. It's unfortunate. Yeah, okay. Aunt Stanley, nice to see you again. Uh, spent three weeks watching this reInvent thing, and this is the first time he's seen the sponsor page. Again, my back is killing me from carrying this entire event for AWS's marketing team. Someone else says that, uh, Jim Tanner says that IBM is a double gold because Red Hat is also listed as a gold sponsor. Oh yeah, there are a few different um, tab uh, different uh, Salesforce divisions doing the same thing. On some level, you think they'd wind up teaming up. And on the one hand, you, you might think that. On the other, it's not like these things are generating enough traffic to notice, I'm sorry to say. Uh, do I think that IBM and Red Hat coordinated that? Uh, no, I think that IBM bought Red Hat 18 months ago and IBM corporately cannot react to things that quickly. IBM is one of those companies that it could go out of business and many of its divisions would not know until 2025. Is it too soon to dunk on solar winds? Great question. Yes, it is. Uh, that's a giant mess and I don't believe in kicking companies when they're down and they are absolutely down. I have some great snark for solar winds, but I'm going to save it a year because they'll be back. They will bounce back from this and their shitty week is not going to be benefited any by me making it even worse. Uh, I have friends who work there, but even if I didn't, it's, it's a tough moment. And I wish more companies understood that you don't shit on you, on people's, on other people's downtime or breaches because today it's them, but tomorrow it's you on some level. The fact that their breach is this wide ranging shows, yeah, they have an awful lot of customers. Whereas if security for pets and taxidermy services, LLC winds up getting breached, they have no customers to, who are not going to notice or care. It's, on some level, victim of their own success. This too shall pass. Let's see here. Yeah, imagine... Oh, God. oh, oh that's a fun one. Yeah, um, a few things. Did I see uh, Ginny, uh, the uh, former CEO of Amazon's consulting package at IBM for her post-chairperson slash CEO life? No, but I'm sure it's going to upset me whenever I see it. It's a... Because she, she ran IBM for a decade. It's really IBM's lost decade. I'm not trying to crap on her personally, but as the CEO, you own the responsibility for success or failure to some extent. Um, someone else says, imagine sponsoring an event like reInvent, AWS's own version of Cloud Next, thinking it will at all keep Amazon from completely cannibalizing your business and smooshing you out of existence. And yeah. So the fun thing about that is that, yeah, you notice that Honeycomb is not a sponsor this year and they basically wound up uh, talking about all the Honeycomb talking points and they just like did a find and replace with Honeycomb with AWS. AWS is a leader in the space of observability and high cardinality and the rest. It's, 
Yeah, go ahead and tell me this sort of thing isn't a shakedown on some level. Yeah. Now, it is good seeing some of Charity Majors and the rest of the team's points coming from other sources. People are talking about this. It's nicer seeing, also nice seeing observability, not just being a word that's used to replace monitoring to describe the shitty thing you've been doing for 15 years already. So I'm optimistic about that, but I kind of like doing business with Honeycomb in a way that I don't like doing business with AWS. And that's a, it's hard to wind up build, articulating a vision around that. Uh, apparently the former CEO of IBM is now getting a, uh, what, $20,000 a day plus expenses and such. Lovely. Lovely. I saw that a second. Yeah, there is. And IBM has given office and staff. You know, as far as, uh, as far as payout packages go, that's not the end of the world. That's not something I'm going to crap on someone for. And on some level, there's always a negotiated exit, even before someone starts at a job like that. It's a one of those, look, at some point, we may have to fire you. Let's just have the contract in advance of what the golden handshake goodbye looks like so we don't have to, you know, call the police. And this goes on into the, uh, into the headlines. Cool. Oh, it's on top of her exit. Good, good, good. So maybe this is consulting just by counterexample. Here's what I did for the last 10 years. Do none of these things. That could actually be worth 20 grand a day to a company like IBM. Okay. Uh, someone else asked, of what, what is Teradata doing here? What? Holy crap. Teradata is here. Teradata is fantastic as a company because they, they're one of the few things that can make companies like Oracle look inexpensive at times. Um, so what do they do now these days? Well, cloud data analytics platform company built for a hybrid multi-cloud reality, solving the world's most complex data challenges at scale. Those certainly are a lot of words that mean absolutely nothing that I can discern. So it's, what is the point of this? Why would anyone want to... Why would I put this up and think that's going to resonate with people? Because I'm a big believer in, they call it solution selling, but I like articulating the painful problem that a company has. And that is, I have a hybrid multi-cloud environment that embraces the new reality. And solving the most complex data challenges at scale is super challenging. No one articulates their pain like that. Our log files are enormous, expensive, and we can't make heads or tails about them. That's the expensive problem. But they're not articulating that at all. Oh, hey, now we have a pop-up here from Verizon telling, ready to start building on the 5G edge with AWS Wavelength. Hell no, that thing causes COVID, as I've learned on Facebook. Okay, um, so what else is this? Are there any vendors that are actually interesting and worth learning about? Okay, let me break character for a second to be honest about that. Yes, a lot of them do. A lot of these companies are interesting. None of these companies have money to burn on these extortionately priced packages because they don't have customers. It is incredibly uh, important to remember that just because it doesn't solve one of your use case problems, it may very well solve someone else's. And if you have a problem that looks like an awful lot like a hammer that these companies can fix, it makes sense. Uh, a Cloud Guru was just brought up as an example. Fantastic. Uh, we are. That's one of those things where we... This chat is going, is sending me the, the problem you have is you look at this and huh, my problem as a large company, for example, is I have 5,000 engineers who I'm looking around. And when you say the word legacy, I think of those people, we need to upskill them because we're doing a digital transformation, which is like a cloud migration, only way more expensive. And we need to get them certified and understanding what this environment looks like. You, you need to have a training approach that works and something like this that helps people learn how these things all work is incredibly valuable from a business perspective. Uh, for what it's worth, we're we, they do sponsor some of my nonsense. I do want to call that out. But long before that happened, we give an A Cloud Guru subscription as a part of their, the Welcome to the Duckbill group to any of our folks who join who want one because learning about this stuff is super challenging. I'm not going to sit here and explain how to pass a certification. I don't know myself, but I will send people to something like this. And there are stories like that for every sponsor that you can find on this list. It's not just that everything here is shitty. I'm, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a narrative here of everything here is crappy and awful. Because if I click in one of these things and start telling stories about what they do and how in an uplifting way, 
yeah, they aren't paying me for this, so they should be paying me for this. Oh, and to dunk on a cloud guru, that's always fun. Uh, I, I really think that on some level, it's unclear because what they're trying to do. Are they trying to market to businesses? Are they trying to, man to market directly to individual learners who are trying to learn? Neither. What they're actually doing is it's a complex money laundering scheme run entirely by Forrest Brazil to finance his entertainment career. And because if he wanted to go out and just do the entertainment song and dance thing, he would have to wind up going through the traditional media direction. And he figured he'd go this way so he can sing his own songs about AWS services and the rest. Okay. Datadog. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I'm a little scared to even click on their thing just because every time uh, you look at them funny, they have one of their folks jump in and scan the living crap out of what it is that you're doing. And like I was interrupted at their booth a couple of years ago twice while having a discussion with one of their VPs who clearly knew me. And can I scan your badge to interrupt a conversation like that is, it's not the best booth etiquette. Uh, there was also a rumor that they were yelled at uh, a couple of years back by their surrounding, by AWS, because surrounding vendors complained of people were starting to avoid the entire area around their booth because of the overly aggressive badge scanning. It, it's, fan it's fanatical. That said, Datadog is fundamentally a company with a license to print money because they are the 800 pound gorilla in this space. And it's just unfortunate for them that I contextualize them as Tinder for pets. That's right. There's no better place to date a dog. And if we look at what they do, it's great. It's anything in the monitoring, observability, et cetera, world, great. They have sessions in Korean, Japanese, Spanish, and something vaguely approximating English, but they drop a lot of cloud terms into it as well. They're a huge company, and they're the one that a lot of modern companies try to become. I never understood that. People want individual components that are best of breed, not the aggregation platforms. If you want the one thing that does it all, Datadog beat you to it by a lot. Okay, other companies here. Snowflake was next on the list. They're a platinum sponsor. Lord knows after their IPO, they can afford that mess. And it's fun because they have to be positioned super well because they're the darling of the market right now. But and AWS likes to talk about them on some level while wincingly having to admit that Redshift is getting the living shit kicked out of it by Snowflake in the market. It's If you do a feature-to-feature -feature comparison... It, there's no contest. I'll have to tweet a picture of this later, but I wound up ingesting the raw text of every AWS announcement going back 15 years and then visualizing it in Tableau. And what it shows that right around eh, 2017 or so, there was an enormous visible jump in the monthly number of releases around Redshift. That's when someone woke the hell up and started getting serious about these products. Now, of course, Snowflake is one of those things where they're making money hand over fist. They are, their revenue is psychotic, and somehow they're still losing money along the way based upon marketing. And I wondered what that meant, and then I remembered at uh, reInvent last year, they had an actual working race car at their booth. Yeah, I, I have marketing theories on how to wind up doing good booth presences. They cost less than a full working race car. NetApp. Fantastic. And I used to love NetApp. They were one of my favorite things because it, their, their tooling was awesome. Waffle is one of the best file systems ever devised. And now that once you're in a full cloud environment, you don't really care about NetApp anymore on a storage basis. Yeah, they say that in a world full of generalists, NetApp is a specialist. I would say that's a their specialty is storage. They say it's helping your business get the most out of your data. Are they trying to pivot to become an analytics company? Da enterprise grade data services. Yeah, everyone wants something enterprise grade, right? That means expensive and slow. Yeah, I'm looking at this and a cloud volumes platform, an integrative new word set of innovative storage infrastructures and intelligent data services. Uh, NetApp shares a common vision with AWS, convincing you to give them money. Uh, they're not as effective at that anymore as AWS is for better or worse. Okay, who's next on the list as I scroll through these things? New Relic. All right. New Relic has sponsored some of my nonsense as well. Uh, New Relic is really interesting from a marketing perspective because their entire whole campaign now about what they're doing. Let's see if this shows up here. Okay, they're not doing a whole lot there. Look at their microsite. What are they, what are they highlighting over here? They're highlighting the AWS Marketplace. That must have taken some corp dev work. 
reInvent is underway. They're proud to be a platinum sponsor. Yeah, you can tell marketing's lying already. No one is proud to spend that kind of money on an performing marketing campaign, but there we go. The, the, the What I like about what New Relic has been talking about lately is we're not crappy anymore in a few key ways. They have a lifetime free tier. They have a bunch of, uh, of pricing reductions. They have a sensible way of approaching things. And apparently their salespeople don't shake you down mid-contract cycle the way that they used to. And I love, 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 seriously, when companies say, we're not shitty anymore as the primary thesis of what it is that they do. They, I was annoyed for a long time back in the 2012 era that they were really the only thing that did what I needed them to do. Now there are other options, but New Relic does remain the best of breed, in my mind, for application performance monitoring. If I'm wrong and there's something else better, please let me know. This is not me shilling. This is, I love competition. I love seeing these things. And I have thoughts and angry opinions. Also, it's very important to New Relic tell you that they use cookies and other similar technologies. Great. In a different world, they might actually be giving real cookies away at that uh, booth. But no, if you say, when I say don't feed the vendors, don't let them feed you either. It doesn't go well. Okay, any other comments there? Oh, Mark is making dinner. Good, good, good. Uh, that's fantastic because AWS is still working on eating all of their partners' lunch. So meals, meal time is great. What other vendors do we want to wind up uh, smacking around? Someone said Trend Micro, but we already did that as the uh, working pro, as effectively the cryptocurrency mining story. We also saw that as a as their uh, jobs program for Mark, who's fantastic and a streamer. And it's fun because then he does the whole sponsored talk and they, AWS makes him not use any of that and instead sit in front of a white wall with unflattering lighting and also get his driver's license and passport photos taken while he's giving a talk. It didn't go super well. Uh, Chaos search. A few folks doing that. They're doing it in all caps, which is just amazing. Um, let's see here. Oh, someone said, oh, before we go into there, I do want to highlight that someone said after New Relic said they'd gladly take money from the Daily Storm or other alt-right groups because they want to stay not political. Yeah, that's that's a freaking minefield at some point. And it's it's a question of who do you want to do business with? Is all money good? I don't believe so. Should you want, do you want to do a deep dive into the business practice of every customer? I also don't believe that's right. The answer is somewhere in between. And I agree with you that there are some very clear, we don't want your money at all. And even if you disagree with that at all and think that all money is good money, at least have the good sense to shut the hell up about it. It's, it's a weird problem. So I understand people going down that direction. Uh, but it scares me from going down that cliff, to be perfectly honest with you, is at some point you wind up, if you dig far enough, every company above a certain size has done something objectionable. And on some level, you go wind up going full Stallman with a 10-year-old laptop and ancient software because every large vendor has upset you. Has AWS done things I find abhorrent? Absolutely, even beyond service naming. There's a bunch of things that could be done better. But there's also the story of at some point as a customer of these companies and having conversations with them, you can position yourself to have a seat at the table to discuss these things rather than yelling at them on Twitter. It's a nuanced issue, and I just want to make sure that I throw that out there. So next we have Chaos Search, which used to have their, their wording all in caps. And I made fun of them for this while they were sponsoring me enough that they wound up fixing the all caps so you don't have to shout Chaos Search every time you mention them. And it's great. Uh, what I love about them is that they have this whole story. It's a it's a veritable song and also matching dance that they talk about. It is like we are the new home of data analytics. Yes, yes, I get that. Let, let's let's subtext filter that for a minute. Yeah, we're like Elasticsearch and we're API compatible with Elasticsearch, except we're not shitty to people. It's stores data on S3, so you don't have to scale storage and compute simultaneously. And you can wind up querying that your data where it lives in your account. The end. They do sponsor my stuff frequently enough that I can do this by heart, but they always like to shy away from that story of... Well, you can't just say we're like Elasticsearch, but not shitty. It's, but that's what you are. Like, even after your licensing fee, which is not extortionate, but it's also not tiny, we're seeing 80% savings in the common use cases. It's, you are like Elasticsearch, but not shitty. Trying to position as data analytics story, great. Now you're trying to, sounds like you're trying to compete with Datadog and whatnot. And as we've already demonstrated, Datadog will drown you with both money and badge scanners. Other fun things. VMware. 
Oh my God. Are we talking old VMware, new VMware, happy VMware, sad VMware? Uh, I also need to ask, are we talking about EMC? Are we talking Pivotal? Are we talking Dell? Because I can't keep up with that corporate shell game. I don't know who owns what or where or how. It's awful regardless. Um, VMware, if you take a look at their the VMware on AWS style offering, the painful piece is that as much as you look at these things, it's they're the payday lender of technical debt because you don't quite have what it takes to migrate an application or a workload. So just run your VMs that are in VMware on-prem in the cloud as a stopping point. But people get stuck and think this is somehow the new normal. At that point, you're just treating the cloud like a pants-shittingly expensive version of your own shitty data center. And unless it's, we keep fucking up the power is your primary data center problem, it might be, then this isn't going to get you where you need to go. It feels like it's a company scrabbling for what's next because in a cloud native world, either with one or multiple providers and in a cloud facing workload environment, you're no longer at a point where you're going to be able to differentiate yourself highly enough for what you're charging. Now, sure, there's a 40 year long tail of enterprises migrating, but that's not going to last forever. Okay. Next up we have Nutanix. Um, what does Nutanix actually do? Because I've got to be honest with you. Someone asked me that the other day. They're a bronze sponsor. And I didn't know. So I looked at their website. And I don't know because I looked at their website. And they talk about um, hybrid cloud infrastructure stuff. Great. But I always hear them in terms of hyper-converged infrastructure, which I don't see them talking about on this page, which is kind of neat. If we go to their on-site sponsor page. Cool. They're talking about a pure hybrid cloud play. I haven't worked with them in any meaningful sense. So I look at this and it's, it feels on some level like it's trying to provide a shim between your data center and your clouds. So you can treat them the same way and manage them with the same tool. The painful piece of that is that if you go down that path and do that, now you're going to wind up living in hell where it's just treating all the clouds as the common primitives between them. It's why running a single workload on multiple providers is generally dumb. I have a whole blog post rant on that. Okay, other things to talk about, rant about. Wait, did I just see the CN, oh, sorry, Zendesk is, Zendesk is the next one. Um, terrific. What is the Zendesk story here? Because I think Zendesk, I think ticketing system or documents page. A bronze sponsor as well. A service first CRM company. So it's like Salesforce, only not Salesforce. Okay. Deliver transparent, responsive, and empowering customer service. Cool. It's more or less um, customer-facing Jira to some extent. You always wind up on a Zendesk page. It's the company's documentation. You can tell you're sort of dealing with the support base or the rest, and the branding isn't quite right. That's Zendesk to my understanding. I think it's, frankly, a great thing to have sponsoring reInvent because anything that AWS does that's articulately SaaS like this sucks. So yeah, if even if AWS announces something, that would be the best thing Zendesk could do. It's like, so what do you do? Oh, we're like AWS uh, pants wetter, only good, uh, whatever the hell they would call the thing. It, it becomes a validation. That's something not a lot of infrastructure companies can say. Uh, next up, Rackspace. Dear God, I thought, again, I thought this was cloud-based. Sorry, Rackspace Technologies. They changed their names because that'll fix it. Uh, they went public again this year to basically pay money to their private equity owners. They keep going back and forth. When it comes to the public markets, Rackspace is kind of like a cat perpetually on the wrong side of a door. So they wind up, we want to go public. Just kidding. We want to go private. Yay, now we're public again. And they don't know what they're doing. They're, they went from offering hosting to now offering consulting services to... Here's what we do. They have bro they do multi-cloud as well, but not well. And I've talked to enterprise execs who I'm friends with who have sat through recent Rackspace meetings and it's, they had no earthly idea what we did, what they did, or but all they asked is what problems do you have so we can try and sell you something that might fix it. And it was not the sort of thing that gave a lot of clarity. It is unclear what they're doing. My personal favorite is when I started mocking them on Twitter when they went public, that they had misspelled the word multi-cloud in their Twitter bio. That doesn't speak well of attention to detail and things like this, it matters. Do the German companies like Software AG. Where the hell is that? Software AG. I know nothing about them because I live in San Francisco where all the good software developers live. Just ask them. 
Okay, integration, IoT, analytics, and business transformation company. Yes, those are several completely different things from one another. Awesome. Uh, they connect and integrate any technology. Really, any technology like my Route 53 database, my Roomba, the Echo that keeps interrupting me mid-sentence, my Twitch streaming camera, and the rest. Like, no, not that silly bullshit. Enterprise technology like the ERP system and the other ERP system. There may very well be something that I'm missing here because, again, not my stories, but fair enough. Uh, yeah, did someone see the CNCF as a sponsor? You did. And that is super bizarre because normally money only flows one direction, from large companies to the CNCF. They're basically the shaking the collection plate under people's noses as they walk past. And, oh, your company uses these projects. You should definitely donate to us. The CNCF is a uh, foundation that it has open source projects that are widely deployed like Kubernetes and also Kubernetes and sort of Prometheus. But have we talked to you about Envoy? You need that for Kubernetes. And it's it's a challenging thing. Foundations are a weird thing I don't pretend to fully understand. And the drama, oh God, the drama of anything involving open source politics, I try and stay away from. But yikes. Have we talked about Splunk yet? Who can afford to talk about Splunk? My God. Uh, the biggest problem that Splunk has across the board is that first, they were around for a really long time and doing some super interesting stuff. They were the an analytics tool. And when I tried to wind up getting a quote at a startup, they quoted more than our company's entire valuation. The problem that Splunk has as a result is that the world has shifted increasingly in the 20th century away from monarchies and into democracies, which means that there's a shortage of princesses to kidnap for ransom to wind up paying the Splunk bill, and you basically need to. It doesn't compete in quite the same ways, especially since when that's super expensive and you charge for ingest, what can we do? Oh, log less, which erodes the entire value proposition of what they do, which is logging. Okay, next up is cloud health or cloud ability. Uh, not going to go down that path, and here's why. I fixed the horrifying AWS bill as a consultancy offering, and I don't view what I do as competing with the platform tools in this space. So across the board, I've looked at all these tools, and they're all generally shitty. They're trying to re-implement Cost Explorer, but if I go too far down that path, it looks like I'm just crapping on a perceived competitor. They're not. I don't view them as competition at all. I view them as got getting addicted to the SaaS model and trying to solve a problem with software that really requires human intervention because there's contact, there's no API for business insight, but I just look salty when I wind up yelling at these folks. I don't want to go down that path because, again, I believe in punching up. All right. Yeah, someone else does not understand Nutanix. Fantastic. I'm sure at some point, once I get an MBA and go through 20 years of mind-numbing career and sit in rooms where my primary language becomes PowerPoint, I'll understand Nutanix better. Yeah, someone else said Rackspace is still in business. Kind of. I mean, that's the problem with these big companies with giant piles of money and private equity backers and the rest is it takes a long time to die. It's They, they have these giant cash hoards and clever financial tricks to manage cash flow. They can linger for a while. And... A lot of these big companies, too, they have customers. It takes a lot to move off of one vendor and onto the next, a concerted effort. When AWS got enraged and moved off of Oracle, look how long it took them to do that. It was, and they were highly incentivized and had to build their own database to pull it off, and it still took them years. But it's not a growth industry. Anaplan. What do we know about Anaplan? I vaguely recall that they're here in San Francisco. They're in the cheap seats of the showcase sponsorship, which means they spend money wisely. The more wise answer would be not to be here at all. Let's see here. Orchestrate business performance. All right. Effectively, it's a business insight. Yeah, I know I just said there's no API for business insight. Feels like they would argue with me. The, the problem is, is that there's so much that happens in the context of conversations and organizational dynamics. I'm skeptical, but they've been around for a while. So we'll see. Yeah, Rackspace purchased Anika, um, AWS partner. Yes, Anika was fantastic. And then Rockspa Rackspace bought them. And you notice when you meet someone who works at Anika, they don't say they work at Rackspace. There's a reason. Yeah, someone else said, Splunk has been obsessed with becoming a $5 billion a year company and it hurts them. Yeah, when you're focusing on those arbitrary financial goals and trying to get there at all costs, it's, it's the wrong thing. It's 
What pain are all of your customers experiencing? What do you see in the market that you're positioned to fix? And how do you make life better? If you pick a big enough problem in the right market, the financial success acts as a trailing function, as opposed to, we've got to make more money. Well, that means squeezing your existing customers and bringing in new customers. And that's a problem. I don't know, I have no firsthand experience whether Splunk is doing that now, but if, if that is what they're doing, you're right. Can I talk about Okta? Yeah, Okta's great. It's one of those things where it's what AWS uh, SSO should be, but isn't on some level. It's that thing that a lot of enterprises have that you wind up hooking into that handles identity federation. Let's see if I can wind up finding them here. Hey, they're a bronze sponsor. Okay, some money, but not all the money. Great. Yep, they're... I really hate that chat pop-up. They are a leading independent provider of identity for the enterprise. Yeah, a leading. Why not the leading? Who the hell is doing more identity work than they are? Except, I know, sure, Active Directory, but that doesn't really count. Yeah, there's a not a whole lot to talk about there. You can book a meeting with them, which neither one of us would enjoy. And you go over to their landing page and they talk about AWS and Okta. This is a delicate marketing story to walk because AWS account management super shitty is a true statement. But it doesn't help when you're partnering with companies to actively insult them to their faces. Okay, www.deloitte. Yeah, that's right. They use www2. If you go to deloitte.com, it redirects to www2.deloitte.com, which is the purest expression of we are struggling with our cloud transformation that you will ever find. It doesn't breed confidence. Some would like a soundboard of that Corey Quinn guy. And could other people want to roast me? Absolutely. I can, I can take it. It's not one of those, oh, I get delicate and uh, start fainting if you start making fun of me. That doesn't go super well. A um, couple more here. Auth0. We talked about uh, Auth0. Did, did we talk about Auth0? I don't think we did, in fact. Yeah, they're great. Um, I don't know why they uh, chose to sponsor uh, reInvent like this. What they should do instead, the most effective and brutally effective marketing strategy Auth0 could take would be to take all of their prospects and buy them a free month of Amazon Cognito because using Cognito instead of Auth0 is absolutely a amateur move. You want to go ahead and, uh, oh God, I used your competitor and now I'm, I'm using you. There's something to be said for that kind of testimonial. That anytime you start moving up the stack, AWS starts to struggle. Auth0 tends to get this right in a lot of ways. To my understanding, we're actively using it for a project we're working on here, but I don't believe they sponsor any of my nonsense yet. Let's see here. Yeah, AWS SSO opening up Federation. Yeah, that, that's great. Now that you can have other identity providers that isn't just AWS themselves. The problem though is that, well, what I'm using now for a lot of stuff is G Suite. I don't like having those uh, Google have a running list of all the vendors I use. On some level, that is super competitive intelligence because if you're, if you wind up having an identity federation thing like Okta, and you you can actively see which integrations each customer uses, that gives you a high level visibility across the space of, huh, that Tableau thing seems to be on the rise or not on the rise, depending. It gives you aggregate information without being creepy with companies' data, where you can just start to see the most highly used interactions. I don't know why other companies like AWS, who are perfectly positioned here, drop the ball so desperately badly, but they did. Google wants to track you across the web on everything, so sure, use us for federation. We'll have engineers write the integration for you. Let's see here. Yeah, other comments here. Uh, Stack Rocks, one of our sponsors as well. Ah, uh, yes, they do security across the entire container lifecycle, which now apparently includes Lambda functions because you can use containers to build the stupid things now. Great. The the subtext here is look at your look at your security st stature in your Kubernetes environment. Are you convinced you're not fucking it up? Of course not. You're probably fucking it up. So wouldn't it be helpful to have someone who knows exactly how this space works look at it for you? It would be. I think that's absolutely the sort of thing that would be benefited uh, massively by having a, a trusted voice in the room. AWS can't be that voice. They offer way too many competing security services themselves that... I don't know that I would trust their opinionated perspective. 
having a third party in that space is super awesome. Now, if Kubernetes ever goes away, I don't have to care about it anymore. StackRox is probably going to be in trouble, but you know, make hay while the sun shines. I really hope Kubernetes goes away soon. Don't, oh, great. AWS is probably wondering why their sponsors page is getting uh, denial of service and that one guy in San Francisco all of a sudden. Oh, I, I'm fully convinced there's someone who's unaware of this in the AWS marketing department. Holy shit, we have a person who visited the sponsor page. I was the only one in the past three weeks. I have very little doubt on that. Okay, Dome 9. Uh, what is their story? Ah, they're not sponsoring here. They decided to spend money correctly, so we have no comments for Dome 9 at this time. Oh, they're Checkpoint now. Oh, okay. That's right. Uh, that's Dome 9. Committed, uh, they're uh, going back to their roots of uh, trying to get acquired. Good for them. Checkpoint has been a software firewall thing for a long time. That, at least that's the last time when I was in data centers I cared about that. It's, you can buy your shitty servers from Dell and then run software from Checkpoint on top of them was always their positioning. Now, leading tech provider of cybersecurity solutions to governments and corporate enterprises. Yeah, as soon as you read a sentence like that and you're not a Fortune 500, your immediate correct response is to close the page because there's nothing for you down here. When you open with a statement like that, what you're saying is, holy shit, is this going to be expensive? And if there are multiple commas in every check you write, don't talk to us. Maybe that's right, and I'm correct. Maybe someone at marketing is listening to this with a horrified look on their face because they didn't realize that that's how it comes off. But no, no company that starts off talking about how they provide solutions to governments and corporate enterprises is going to have a positive conversation with a relatively smaller scale environment. And spoiler, even in giant enterprises, there are smaller scale environments. Tomorrow's Fortune 500s are starting in today's garages, generally backed by VC money. There has to be an on-ramp as those companies grow for them to become your customers. Yeah, someone asked for Cloud Checker. Same story. They're interesting in that they also mostly focus on AWS cost optimization, but unlike a few others, they tend to also aim at the security space too because, well, while we're in here rummaging around with API data, why not pull that as well? It leads to a confused messaging, and I don't see them as much as I used to. Oh, my business partner, who apparently is back for having his thighs rotated, says, what's the sponsor on this list that deserves more attention than people give them and why? Uh, that's a good one. Who's sponsoring us this month? I'll point to them. I'm kidding. If I take a look across the board, there's a lot of companies here that I like, a lot of companies that are doing interesting things. But who's not getting enough attention? Well, I have a bunch of negative attention I can dump on everyone. But when I start getting into this... Um, Gremlin's getting a lot of attention as AWS is inarticulately trying to eat their business. The you know, Lucid Chart's fun to build ridiculous architecture diagrams. That's fun. But by and large, when I look at this, I'm not seeing individual companies that are jumping out as far as they need a lot more attention than they're getting. What I am seeing is the overall narrative that's getting lost, which is there's an awful lot of big companies who are sponsoring these things year after year. And it's not because they like donating money to AWS, except maybe Intel or something. It's that there are companies that need things like this. Uh, and as soon as you think you've seen it all in the cloud, talk to one more customer. You're going to learn something new. There are large companies that are considering moving to virtual machines off of bare metal because they've been eyeing virtualization for 15 years and they think now's the time to make the jump. There's a huge long tail of big companies there. And just because these sponsors aren't necessarily for you doesn't mean that, I, that I'm going to wind up, uh, that I'm not going to wind up uh, having a use for them somewhere else. Oh, someone said, uh, so a sponsor, we have one actual visitor in our booth on this thing. Great, hope it wasn't me. Yeah, the, uh, let's see. Is SAP still trying to sell only HANA? I think that it's a whole uh, shell game where there is no such thing as SAP HANA because all I know about is AWS offers dedicated instances for SAP HANA. Cool. And so what does it do exactly? Well, turns out that it has 24 terabytes of RAM, not an exaggeration. So I hear that and I think, oh, it's for Slack. Not so much. The, the, what I don't get there is I would go significantly out of my way to never, ever, ever need a single node with that much RAM in it. And folks who do have enormous piles of money. Um, I think that a lot of other SAP offerings don't translate to cloud quite as well as HANA does. So that is probably their vision of the future and the direction they want to start pushing people into. 
Uh, someone asked, what is my least favorite MSP? I think that's managed service provider. Can you give me an example or two of what an MSP might be from this list, just so I can contextualize them appropriately? Because technically, everyone provides some form of managed service in the cloud, unless they hang up on you. Uh, Cognizant, Infosys, Deloitte. Okay. Having companies that, uh, what, effectively manage your entire environment and infrastructure for you, and then just wind up uh, passing that through to AWS. That's the that's the general direction those things go in because those all three of those do a lot and it's hard to disambiguate. Um, yeah. Oh, and then send you the bill for it. Sure. It's it's one of those outsourcing of work, but not the responsibilities. I've never liked the model. On some level, sure, you're right. Owning your owning your technology is not a core competency for most companies. But paying someone else to implement this on some level becomes weird. There's also, uh, one of the things I don't like about a lot of tools is that they, and MSPs as well, is their management fees a percentage of the bill. Well, if you're paying someone who's managing your stack a percentage of what you pay AWS, where's the incentive for them to lower that bill? It doesn't exist. It's a, it's a weird problem. I've never been a huge fan of outsourcing that type of thing. If I'm going to outsource it, I'll outsource the whole function. I don't pay an MSP to run WordPress on AWS. I pay WP Engine to care, worry about that whole thing for me and just expose a WordPress endpoint for me to work on. That's the right answer. Uh, oh, what should all these sponsors do after reInvent to keep up marketing momentum heading into Q1? Asked by my colleague who works on the account exec side for sponsorship sales. Absolutely. Call me. Write checks. You definitely want to wind up uh, having my nonsense be sponsored. If for no other reason than A, I'm not this expensive. Jesus. The the minimum buy 35 grand and it goes up to forever is insane. It also isn't this staid and boring. I don't have the patience to do a podcast read where I read corporate speak. I tell a story. That's how it works. And I think that if more marketing groups did that, suddenly you would, A, have better directly measurable results, but the indirect stuff of an industry that starts to actually understand what the fuck it is you do becomes so incredibly helpful. I think that's the sort of thing that gets missed and I would love to see improve. Any other companies, things to point out? Questions in the general, because we're at the end of the hour and I should probably, you know, go and send some email to all of y'all. But curious to hear what other folks are seeing, whether I've completely missed the boat on anything. If I've said something here that offended you during this safari excursion, please, by all means, let me know. I love taking uh, insipid comments from folks. Rubric, not to be confused with Rubrics Cube. I think they sponsored me once at one point. I don't know if they're doing it now. I, I don't see sponsors until stuff goes out. There's a, an editorial firewall there. Um, let's see here. Cloud data management company that enables companies to maximize value from data and applications wherever they are. They offer a platform for data orchestration, security, and recovery. You've already heard my thoughts on Enterprise Speak. And then you click the thing, and what's their page? They're driving traffic to a happy hour that has already happened. What the hell tier were they? A competency partner. They dropped the money on a gold sponsorship to drive traffic to this thing. And these things are apparently going to be up until January, and there's no way to go and find new information from this. That's a marketing swing and a miss, something fierce. It's unclear what they do. When you visit their page, they have a video, but who has the patience to watch those things? And it's just, they didn't fill out a form. Sorry, that, that's not a great approach. So, all right. What do I think AWS will change if they do another online reinvent? Uh, are there things I would change or the things that I think AWS will change? Because we've shown that despite having crappy mobile apps and crappy websites for registration and the rest for years, they haven't fixed that. They are, it's still unclear that reInvent has been clearly differentiated as what it is. They talk about it being an education conference. Cool. It's also about a bunch of service releases. It's also a chance to take times, uh, play, take turns, pleasure, partners to spend time pleasuring each other back and forth in the expo hall. It's a chance for sponsors to wind up filling their Q1 pipelines by sponsoring all of this nonsense. It's a chance to have uh, deep dive discussions. They do a bunch of press work. They talk to analysts quite a bit as well. And they have briefings with customers. It's, it's, and they have a bunch of training events and some weird ass midnight parties. It's trying to be all things to all people. So what is reInvent? a victim of its own sprawl to some extent. I love that they broke out reinforce last year into a own, its own security focused conference. I'd love to see more delineation of this because who cares about security? Well, ostensibly everyone does. 
But at the same time, they're trying to get a big deal done and fill their marketing leads and eat all the it set a world record for hot dog eating or something. I don't know. It becomes a problem. Um, okay. How on earth will sales and marketing leaders hit their numbers in Q1 after they've wasted their budget on sponsoring reInvent? Uh, I don't think it's going to ever be quite that clear cut because it's a saw in marketing that half your budget is wasted. The question is figuring out which half. Spoiler, it was this half. This half, yeah, this half right here. This was half, this half was the waste. Don't do this until there's a better story. And if I'm wrong, Please, I would love for sponsors of reInvent to reach out and let me know that, Corey, you're a jackass. We got a bunch of super qualified leads. Because I had one person say that already. It's great. How'd you do it? And the answer is, oh, we did a massive social media campaign and with ad, and ad buys to talk about all the giveaways we're doing at our booth. You shouldn't have to do that to derive benefit from sponsorships. I have angry opinions on that. It's And the biggest problem, too, across the board is that, and I understand why, it's the first online event. There was no real guidance given from AWS explaining why this thing is the way that it is and what people could do to maximize on it because they didn't know. And I am sympathetic to that. I'll be much harsher on it next year. I've been mostly kind this time. But there's, it's a painful story. No one was planning on doing this and basically staying inside for a year and a half. But here we are. Okay, it looks like the questions, comments, and personal attacks against me personally have mostly dried up. Thanks, appreciate that. Anything else I can answer for you folks, or should we call it a stream? There's a slight bit of lag. People are frantically typing. No, make fun of something else. What am I drinking? Uh, a LaCroix. Uh, water on these things is great. I try and stay away from alcohol when I wind up doing these events because... After the third beer, I get way too honest. Um, also, true story, I don't drink at reInvent basically ever because I, I, I did it too many times and got it wrong where I'll have one drink too many at a vendor event and then I'll wake up hungover and feeling crappy because Las Vegas already makes you feel that way and you're sort of behind the curve for the rest of the event. Um, there's also the fun story who have uh, folks who always have these incredibly well rehearsed and cause obviously for their frequent use apology texts for getting out of line the previous evening. And that doesn't, that, and that's just, I'm talking straight white guy, cis het man here. It gets way more problematic if you don't look like this. So it, I just tend to avoid at the big conferences just because it, the reward isn't there. Now, that said, I'm absolutely going to go drink a bottle or two of wine after this, after someone takes away my tweeting privileges. That's the real role of having a CEO, is that I can, my business partner acts as the adult supervision for my ridiculous shenanigans. Let's see, this stuff tastes like it should have booze in it. I would argue after three weeks of reInvent, everything tastes like it should have booze in it. I... I screwed up, to be very direct with you folks. I wound up running too fast through this. I treat it like it was the one-week thing that you can then recover after. We're in week three, and at this point, I don't know which end is up. I don't know. I'm not firing fully on all cylinders. I'm probably being way too honest, but I don't even care. And it's it's just, it's too much. Please include Mike next time. I agree. Everyone loves Mike. He's fantastic. But he'll be busy getting his thighs rotated again next time. Of course. Isn't there a fourth week of reInvent? That's right. It's growing. It's, there's a, there's a, a three more days in January, I think 12th through the 14th uh, of more sessions. I don't know if there's a keynote yet. I mean, who would give up a keynote stage given the opportunity? Is it just breakout sessions? Is it something else? My personal favorite is that if you take the word breakout session and just erase part of the B, it suddenly becomes freakout sessions, which for a lot of partners, when something new is announced is exactly what it turns into. But we'll see. It's, I, it keeps extending out, and I wish it didn't. I think it's kind of crappy that there are all these amazing services that get dropped in a one or now three week span, and March is kind of quiet. So spread these releases out throughout the year so people can appreciate them. You don't need to see how many in a row you can get out before Andy Jassy has to get off the stage for exhaustion and rehydrate. It's It feels like it's incredibly hard to keep up with. I know it is for the product teams, and I have a lot of sympathy for that. But it's also painful because you have to go beyond that and realize customers are, are impacted by this. There's a reason that people put up with my jokes. It's not because they're funny. It's because my ridiculous newsletter is the only way to get the signal from noise. What the hell's going on? That's a problem. So yeah, there's a half of a fourth week of reInvent. So we'll see. And then watch it extend out still further. Anything else I can answer, address, insult? Thrilled to do it.
All right. So, uh, Salesforce. Yes. Oh, God. The, uh, yeah, the Salesforce is a pleasure because they're on here with Tableau. They're on here with Slack now as well. I'm kind of cautiously optimistic about Salesforce where if Slack is going to be acquired by someone, it's probably the right direction because they've mostly kept hands off at Tableau as a customer, which is great because it's not like QuickSight's getting any better. And I I think that if they just leave Slack alone on some level, that'd be great. If they start trying to make it more enterprisey and charge more and have it do all these things and people really just want a chat, a chat nexus, it's going to be in for a bad time. We'll see. Uh, I think that it's a little ridiculous just given the rivalry of like what Salesforce does beyond that. Uh, in addition to acquiring things, they're also a giant CRM. And I looked into it and it's fiendishly expensive, not because of the software itself, but the sheer amount of custom work you have to integrate it with other stuff and align it with things. It's a massive investment. I want it. I just can't justify the expense yet. Oh, good. Someone's insulting the last week in monitoring uh, mailing list. Yeah, it was monitoring.love, which has since been sunset I, or handed off to um, elsewhere, I believe. I don't recall offhand. But yeah, my business partner wrote that for a while. And it's it's weird. They're different, different people excel at different things. And I enjoy writing the newsletter because it gives me a chance to try being funny and make myself laugh. When you don't approach it with a sense of humor, it's a very different story. And it's it becomes it becomes barren. It becomes grueling. There are times where I don't want to write the newsletter in the evenings. Like I want to start writing them on Thursdays and then just push Friday the following week, and then things are fine. In practice, I still find myself writing them late at night on Sunday while crying. I would prefer to have a better answer. Yeah, uh, they think they left Heroku alone. Yeah, you're right. They didn't ruin Heroku or do anything neat with it for the last ten years. It's Heroku is great. I wish that I could see it expanded to other stacks, but. It's just not there. I use Heroku a bit, but it's mostly been frozen in amber. Uh, where did I get my hat? The Amazon. It's if you're at some point you can order anything on the internet and they will deliver it to you. I'm still waiting for the one day delivery on my cease and desist for all this nonsense. All right. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I will be back uh, in the next day or so. Keep an eye on your email. Featuring a, uh, and one of these will have a, a wind up featuring a special AWS executive guest that I'm not naming yet, but it's going to be fun. It'll be great to wind up effectively taking the complaints from a, you know what your problem is perspective. Thanks for listening. I appreciate all of you. Uh, stay safe, stay salty, and don't do anything I wouldn't do.